When Mercedes invited me for a nighttime autonomous test drive at CES, I was worried that my video would be too dark to watch. Well, as it turns out, after sundown is the best time to peek inside the machine. I'm Michael Fisher of Mr. Mobile, that's Nicole Scott of Mobile Geeks, and we got a first-hand look at how Mercedes teaches cars to drive themselves. So Las Vegas is the final stop in what has been a five-month test drive across five continents for Mercedes' intelligent drive team, the purpose of which was to gather as much data as possible about driving in as many settings as possible. For every country Mercedes sells cars in, there are different driving regulations, different road layouts, and the behavior of the people on those roads is different too. To get a car to learn how to better assist a human driver and eventually drive itself takes a mammoth amount of information. And this S-Class test car has a mammoth piece of equipment just for the task. This is not the system that actually does the self-driving. Surprisingly, that's this much smaller magic box. Rather, this is what records all the data the car gets as it's driving, up to 12 gigabytes a minute, so that Mercedes can analyze it later on. Fun fact, the equipment works so hard that even in the January desert cold, it's not necessary to run the heat in the car. All the data being collected comes from the car's sensors. In addition to the ultrasonic proximity sensors dotting the exterior, we've got a radar system behind the grill up forward, exterior cameras covering front, side, and rear, sensors that monitor a ton of car systems internally, and cabin cameras that watch the driver so Mercedes can learn more about human inputs. Remember, this is a test car, not a production model. So whenever it's rolling, there's always a human behind the wheel who can take over if the system runs into a situation it can't handle. As we drive the streets of Las Vegas, I get an up-close view of what the car sees through all those sensors. It uses the combination of radar, optical, and ultrasonics to see and classify objects in its view. And that fusion of sensors means it knows the difference between not just a car and a person in a crosswalk, but also the difference between a person standing alone and one holding hands with another person, or walking a dog, or pushing a shopping cart. Ten times every second, the brain of the system updates its information and makes new decisions based on it. When there's a choice to be made about dealing with something aggressively or conservatively, the system plays it safe. But you know, safe doesn't mean the same thing everywhere. Part of the reason this was a world tour was because drivers in Shanghai, for example, don't deal with pedestrians in the same way as drivers in Las Vegas. Cars on the Autobahn use different following distances compared to cars in the Outback. Road markings differ across regions. You get the idea. Thankfully, the car doesn't have to work from scratch when it's trying to figure out a new roadway. A partnership with Here Maps gives it local data for many regions. My takeaway from my half hour in the passenger seat, teaching a computer to drive a car is weirdly not all that different from teaching a person. That's not to say it's easy. I mean, think about it. Driving is hard. There are so many variables on even a typical spin around the block. Not to mention the once-in-a-lifetime random unexpected event that turns on a split-second decision. That's why companies working toward the self-driving car can't just simulate this stuff. They need the kind of random data you can only get from unpredictable humans in a chaotic world. Of course, companies also need the technology to harness that data and the scale to learn from it across the whole planet. Mercedes isn't the only company doing this, but it's the only one to have given me such an in-depth peek at the future of driving. One last bonus look at that future came at the end of our drive. At the moment, much of the technology being demoed here is used to assist a human driver, not totally take over for one. But when cars do go fully automated, they're going to need a way to communicate with people. Enter these fancy headlights, which are actually projectors. Not for impromptu movie nights, although that's definitely possible, but for communicating. For example, to tell someone waiting to cross the street that, yes, it's safe to cross. I see you, and I'm not going to run you over. That's something a driver communicates with eye contact and maybe a hand gesture in today's cars, but something a self-driving auto might do with a system like this. Of course, you need a different solution for when the sun's out, but um, 
one step at a time. Folks, this is just a quick peek. If you want to hear more thoughts on the Mercedes Intelligent Drive Tour, I had a great chat with Nicole Scott immediately after this test drive, the video of which you can find over on her channel. I'll drop the link in the description and the comments. Big thanks to Nicole for inviting me along on this one, and use that same comment section to let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this in 2018. Mr. Mobile CES 2018 coverage is brought to you by Thrifter, a new way to save money on everything from gadgets to home goods by shopping based on value and not hype. Check out the latest deals at thrifter.com and tell them Mr. Mobile sent you. This was my final video from CES 2018, folks. Next week, we'll circle back to smartphones, laptops, and maybe a wearable or two. Subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss it. And until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.